Hi, how you doing? Doing good? Yeah, cool. That's good to hear. So we're going to go ahead and uh, worship the Lord right now. So if you guys want to stand up with us, um, it's really, I always love being able to worship with you guys, either in there or up here, and just being able to worship with all of you is, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. It's a, it's a cool vision of what's going what's gonna to come um, uh, when we all are in heaven together singing praises. But anyway, that's a conversation. But yeah, we're just going to sing some uh, songs right now and glorify God. So yeah, let's uh, glorify God this morning. So lay down your hurt, lay down your 
the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. And all who are broken, lift up your face.
Lord, that is what we uh, want. We want to, to burn for you. We want to be uh, excited for you and passionate about uh, you, Lord, because you are, you're passionate about us. You're passionate about your people. You're passionate about um, the lost and the saved. And um, so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for how much you love us. Um, Lord, and the only response that we can have is to uh, love you back uh, imperfectly. And Lord, you love us perfectly. And, and um, yeah, and so we love you back. Um, and we love yeah, and we thank you and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can sit down now. If you want. Good morning, GCL. Today is Sunday, August 29th, and these are your announcements. Next week's Sunday service will be Carlton Auditorium. It's time for our annual lake retreat at North Florida Christian Camp. If you don't know what that is, then you should definitely come and see what all the hype is about. We will be staying at site in cabins and dorms, learning from God's word and having some fun in the lake. The retreat will be from September 10th at 6.30 p.m. through September 11th at 2 p.m. at North Florida Christian Camp. It will be $30 with $5 discount for the early bird special before this Wednesday. It's also $5 off for any first timers to this annual retreat. Be sure to register at GatorChristianLife.com and while you're there, find some more details about what you should bring and what you can expect. If this is your first time at GCL, be sure to stop by the info table for a free gift that we have for you. If you'd like to stay up to date on church-wide communications, download the Discord app and join our server by going to GatorChristianLife.com slash Discord. We have a number of Bible discussions specifically geared towards new students. If you're a new student, check out our list of Bible discussions for which one works best for you. Those are all your announcements for this week. For more information on any of these announcements, check out GatorChristianLife.com or the info table just outside Carlton. Now take a minute before we move on to pull up your Discord app on your phone and send your prayer request to the prayer channel. If you're visiting or new to GCL and haven't downloaded the Discord app at GatorChristianLife.com, feel free to text your prayer request to 352-641-0GCL and your prayer request will be added to the Discord. still sound tired from the tubing yesterday. Let's try that again. Good morning, GCL. Good morning. All right, that's better. Hey, well, my name's Brennan. I'm one of the house church leaders in the Citizens House Church, and just so glad you're here. I heard something over here. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, I see a lot of new faces, a lot of returners. Hey, just so glad you're here to worship 
our God here on uh, the University of Florida campus this morning. Uh, raise your hand if you had a great time tubing yesterday. Uh, the kids and I went out there, yes, awesome. A lot of fun happening yesterday. And hey, I hope, hopefully you've had a great chance to get connected uh, during this first week of classes. And hey, if you're a new disciple group leader of a new student Bible discussion, why don't you head on up to the stage here and we're gonna talk about that for a second. It looks like we can all fit. Well, yes, yeah, so as I was saying, hopefully you've gotten a chance to be uh, connected uh, with GCL this week. We've had a lot of events going on. And this Sunday service is a great way uh, to stay connected, not only with God, but with others uh, here in GCL. But the best way we feel like to stay connected throughout the week is through our small groups, what we call disciple groups or new student Bible discussions. And so on the screen here in a second, you'll see a list of 16 different uh, discussions going on throughout the week, different locations, different times. And hey, if you haven't uh, visited one of these, some of them started last week, some will be starting uh, this week, so don't worry, you haven't really missed anything. Uh, find one where uh, you're living, maybe in a dorm or the Rights Union, if that's more convenient. Find a good time. Uh, like I said, a lot of stuff going on. If you have any questions, feel free to see uh, one of these folks uh, after service, and they love to talk to you. So take a picture of that. You can also go out to the info table after service to uh, get a print out of this. You can also go to GatorChristianLife.com and find out more about these new uh, student groups. All right, and also take some time now to fill out the digital connect card. If you go to GatorChristianLife.com slash connect, there should also be a QR code right here. If you take a few minutes to fill that out, it's a great way to stay up on uh, different um, announcements we have going on to get information about these new groups, to find out more about our different retreats and activities we have going on. And if you fill one out today after service, there actually be two drawings. One uh, for today will be a Chick-fil-A gift card. And then also we'll be raffling off our electric scooter from the Connect events that we've had been going on. So definitely fill this out, uh, get your info in there. We love to stay connected throughout the week. And again, there'll be a drawing after service. So. Give it up for these new disciple group leaders. Again, if you have any questions, definitely contact one of them. You guys can uh, have a seat. All right, and as you're wrapping up, filling out that Connect card, uh, we're going to stay up here and talk a little bit more about the Lake Retreat. As we finish off this uh, new season of uh, fall semester starting, the different Connect events, the tubing yesterday, we have one more event that's a highly anticipated retreat for the fall semester, and that's the Lake Retreat. And so Allison and Alexis are going to get us hyped up even more. So don't take my word for it. That is good. They're going to talk about how it's impacted their lives in the past. So here we go. Hey, I'm Alexis. Hi, I'm Allison. Um, <laughs> um, my first year at GCL was last year, and that was my first lake retreat, too, and I had so, so much fun. Uh, I highly recommend it to all of you. It was, it was a grand old time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so some of you might be wondering, like, what is lake retreat? Uh, so it's basically our first fall um, retreat of the semester, and that's happening, it was said, on September 10th, September 10th and 11th. <laughs> And uh, so basically in the retreat, there is um, a lot happening. There is worship, there is discipleship tools that you learn, there are lessons um, and fun at the lake. Also like team building is really important there. Uh, that happens, which I really enjoy. Um, so it's basically a good getaway from school <laughs> and uh, it's the whole package, so yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, Last year when I went, I was only kind of recently saved, and um, when I went to Lake Retreat, I learned so much more about God and my Lord and Savior, and um, yeah, it's a great environment to learn more about 
our living God that we all love so, so much. Um, but even more than that, I learned so much more about my brothers and sisters here at GCL, um, especially Alexis. That's when I got really close to Alexis. Um, she was my new student Bible discussion leader last year, along with Caitlin, and um, that was when I really realized what it meant to be in a disciple group. Um, Alexis and Caitlin were people that I can live life with um, and just just to the fullest, and that I realized that at, at Lake Retreat um, was where I finally realized what it, was, what it meant to be in a disciple group. So, yeah, I highly recommend it to anyone. Um, that led me to now leading a disciple group this year uh, with Alexis, um, and, yeah, highly recommend it. Yeah. yeah. So besides uh, having, like, the exhilarating moment at uh, Lake Tree and witnessing all the te testimonies and all the amazing baptisms. Um, I definitely grew closer with Allison and a bunch of um, other people that I've known, but I, what I got out of it, the like the last one, was that I grew a lot closer to her. <laughs> and um, I just was inspired a lot by her um, and how much Allison has grown. <laughs> Um, from just like being like this little guppy in our new disciple group. Um, and then just now like her leading with me, like alongside me, running a race with me. Um, so that's been amazing. So I definitely recommend if you're not part of a disciple group or quote unquote, the new student Bible discussion group, <laughs> that took me time to memorize. Um, <laughs> uh, if you're not part of that, I recommend that you go to the info table, check that out, see what who clicks, who you click with. Um, and yeah, I was there earlier. And also for Lake Retreat, I, re I definitely encourage you to sign up for that. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, give it up for Allison and Alexis. <laughs> All right, so again, Lake Retreat is gonna be in a couple weekends from now, September 10th, starting at 6.30 p.m. That's a Friday night uh, through Saturday, 2 p.m. There's no home football game that weekend, don't worry. Uh, you'll have uh, plenty of free time to come out and join. Uh, again, it's gonna be $30 per person. If you register in the next two days before September 1st, you get a $5 discount. And also, if you've never been to one of our lake retreats before, it'll also be $25. There's also a Saturday option. Maybe you're working late on Friday or it just doesn't work out on your schedule. You can come just on Saturday, $15 for that. And as Alexis mentioned, one of my favorite parts of the semester is seeing people get baptized. And that'll be an option at the Lake Retreat. And we know from scripture that baptism doesn't save us. It's not a requirement for salvation. It's a free, uh, salvation's a free gift through Jesus Christ if we believe or trust in him. But baptism is an outward declaration of our faith in Jesus Christ. And so if you haven't taken that step of obedience, if you haven't taken that step of faith, I encourage you to pray about that the next two weeks. Talk to me, talk to some others here in GCL about what that looks like and to, to be baptized at the Lake Retreat. And so now we're gonna uh, transition into our time of prayer. Uh, we love to pray here on Sunday mornings with each other. Here are prayer topics for the uh, new students to get connected in a group, um, spiritual growth in the Lake Retreat. And we also have a hurricane uh, coming into Louisiana today so we can pray uh, that everyone in that state stays safe. So if you can, break down into groups of two or three. If you don't know the people, definitely introduce yourself and then take, take a few minutes to pray for these topics. Thank you.
All right. Good. Hey, I want to encourage you to fill out that Connect card. Somebody asked me uh, if you're an old GCL or a new one, is the, is the drawing still valid? Yes. Anyone in here? Uh, look forward to uh, receiving uh, Chick-fil-A cards. Yes. Um, another thing, I just want to get you up to speed, a, l- a little uh, business here with, you wonder, okay, why are we here in Turlington? And uh, we, we've been in Carlton for ages, and we hope to be back there. Uh, what happens typically at the beginning of every semester, the administration, uh, they, holds off, they hold off uh, reserving rooms until after drop ad. And as soon as that's over, then they'll assign rooms. And so it was actually the end of the day Friday, uh, we got our room assignment. We had asked for Carlton, they gave us Turlington. Um, we may be here for the fall, but uh, we'll go talk to them on Monday and see what works out. Um, but either way, God has blessed us with a room, and we're excited to, to worship together. So we'll let you know. Uh, look on Discord. We'll have it on uh, Facebook, website, uh, whatever. We'll, we'll let you know uh, which one it is for next week. But either way, look forward to seeing you here. Now, some of y'all are thinking, wasn't that guy up here last week? You know, is, is he going to be teaching all the time? And the promise is no. Uh, we've got a, a dynamic teaching team. I uh, look here, we've got Brian. I'm probably not going to catch all of them. There's Jeff, there's Brennan and Larry and uh, Dax and Ed and, uh, of course, Justin, my co-pastor. Uh, so anyway, different ones will be teaching part of our teaching team throughout this semester. And I get to, thank you, um, I get to start us off though. And I'm so excited about this series. Uh, uh, looking forward to, to developing this series that I, I believe makes all the difference in how we even start the semester. Everything changes. Everything changes. And we we talked last week, if you were with us, uh, we talked about just our true identity. This week we're going to talk about God's love relationship with us. And next week we'll be on the purpose God has given us. We have a divine purpose that we're going to live our life out for. And so uh, I look forward to, uh, for us to go through this in this morning as we tackle everything changes. I love you this much. I'm looking forward to just sharing on that. If you have questions, feel free. You can type them in the last few minutes of our time. I'm going to field some questions. If I like your question, I'll field it. And uh, if, uh, Either way, uh, if there's ones we don't cover, I'll, on the theological Uh, channel of our discord. I will answer those during the week. So um, yeah, looking forward to just jumping right in. And and I wanted to just start out, you know, when I I talked uh, last week, I got to share with you a little bit about me in elementary school and some of the challenges I faced and this identity issue. And I want to take us a little bit farther. I think I did mention I actually put my trust in Christ as a freshman in college. It wasn't here, uh, but I I put my trust in Christ as a freshman. And at that point, uh, there are certain things that definitely uh, so much changed in my life. Whether I was aware of it or not, uh, I was sealed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, God was at work in my life, changing me, transforming me. Now, for me, uh, I felt like I, I... I have to admit, I am a baby boomer. Now, by definition or or, uh, stereotype, that means there's things like being uh, conscientious, hard work ethic. Uh, What are you laughing about? (laughs) Uh, uh, Just uh, goal-oriented. And it's easy to to approach the Christian life like that. Like, um, we can go about, okay, I'm saved. Jesus paid for my sins. Uh, 
I'm going to heaven. And so now I just go about my life, living it out for God. I've got things to do. I've got goals to meet. I've got things I need to set. And uh, sorry, I'm going to take this off. Okay. Um, and so with that, um, that's kind of how I, I started my Christian life. Uh, just I, I had the confidence God had given promises from his word that I took to heart. And I was confident that I was, I was going to heaven. I was going to be with God eternally. But there was a mindset that, well, I just need to, to continue to work hard as a Christian. And thank goodness God let me in. And uh, I, I know I didn't deserve it. And probably I was one of the, you know, the last picked, whatever. But I got in. And, uh, and now that he's, he's promised it, he's gonna, I can hold him to his promise whether he likes it or not, I'm in. And so it's easy to have that mindset. Fortunately, I, I, I transferred here to University of Florida my junior year and got involved in, in GCL right off the bat the first semester. And I saw the lives of people in GCL that were quite different from the Christian world I was around. People really took their faith seriously. And their motivation, that's the thing to me that stuck out the most was that they were motivated by God's love. Like it wasn't this obligation, this pressure, I've got to do something. But there was this sense that no, it, it just overflowed. You could tell it overflowed from God's love for them. And I wanted that. And I, I, I feel like over time, God was transforming my life to see how crucial that was for my walk, and my, my relationship with Christ. Now, undoubtedly, some of us either at some point in time or, or possibly even now have some of those feelings, some of those concerns, like, man, I know, probably I know because I put my trust in Christ, he paid for my sins, I'm going to be with him eternally. God has promised that, but... Maybe he feels a little bit obligated to follow through on that promise because if he really knew me, maybe he'd back out. Maybe he'd think twice about it. Fortunately, I'm in because God's a, he, he's a man of his word. But, man, I feel like I, I just buried it in. I'm not sure if, uh, if this is something that I'm feeling like my motivation is one that is truly based on God's love. And what does that look like anyway? Well, this morning I want to encourage you with just uh, a, a several verses we're going to go through. Because I, I believe God addresses this in a very clear way. A number of times throughout Scripture that he wants us to understand the magnitude of his love. He doesn't just say, you know, I promised it, I'm, I'm going to pour my life out to you. Uh, you know, that's just my character. That's who I am. Much more than that. He wants us to see, yes, and, and time and time again in Scripture, he, he puts some superlatives in there that I want us to see this morning. So as we start out, the first thing we're going to tackle uh, is the intensity of God's love for me. The intensity of God's love for me. Verses that just spring out from the Bible that emphasize how intense God's love is. The first one is in Psalm chapter 103 and verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Man, you know, as I look at that verse, the, the word is, that jumps out of the page at me is the word abounding. God abounds in loving kindness towards us. What is that word? There's a picture there that, uh, let's see, I wonder if my prop got, take, oh, here it is. <whistles> Who knows what this is? This man, this man. Yell it out. Yes, this comes in handy in, in super emergencies. And I can tell you about some that I've had. 
at my house, I was working on the, the sink, uh, under the, the bathroom sink, and a rusty pipe broke. This is a water pipe, a pressure pipe. So guess what happens? The bathroom starts flooding. I mean, it's just pouring out. So I'm putting my hand up against the pipe, you know, and you're trying to, whoa, whoa. And, and, but you realize you're just trying to buy time. It just keeps coming. And so I've got to get out to the, the road just in front of my house to this box that's underground, and I've got to turn off a valve. And so I'm running. I've got to find a tool that'll work. And I, I mean, I had to go through a couple of different wrenches before I found one that worked. By that time, you know, the uh, people were swimming in the bathroom. And so it was rough. But I finally, with a, uh, working hard with a, a, a wrench, I got it out. And I thought, man, that water was abounding. It was coming out, and it was not going to stop until I got something on that, that, that uh, valve and got it out. So next thing I did, I went to Lowe's, and I, I bought one of these things. It was only a few dollars, but I thought, next time it happens, I'm going to be ready. And instead of taking minutes, it's going to take seconds to turn that valve off. Now, just as things work out, you know, once you get something like this, you never have to use it. But who knows? I'm going to have it if I can remember to bring it home. Okay. Uh, God's love is abounding for us. He tells us it's just overflowing. We can't stop it. We can't suppress it. Do we believe that? His love towards you is abounding. We read on, and this is in Song of Solomon. And here, this is not only, it talks about this, this love relationship, uh, between a guy and a girl, but it's, it really reflects, intended to reflect God's relationship with us. And so we, we read it in that context. It says, you have made my heart beat faster, my sister, my bride. You have made my heart beat faster with a single glance of your eyes. It was third grade. I was in class... <laughs> I'm going to put you guys in the back. <laughs> Susie Stinson, she was pretty. And there was something about that. I, every time I saw her, it was like my heart would start beating. When she looked at me, for whatever reason, it was like boom, 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 boom. Man, I was in love. Now, come on, who here has had, you don't have to raise your hand, but I know you, you've had those kind of experiences through elementary school, maybe high school, maybe whenever. Well, it happens different times, but definitely it happened uh, when I, I met my to-be wife in college. And, um, you know, did, I had a picture of, of okay, it's up here. There. Oh, that was our engagement picture. Can you believe it? All right. That's back when pictures were in black and white. Uh, just kidding. Okay. But <laughs> that's God's response to us. Can you believe it? When we just give God a single glance, just turn our eyes to him, just say, okay, God, I know you're there. God's heart just beats out of his chest. He is so enthralled that we would give him attention the time of day. Isn't that amazing? That the God of all creation, that's his heart. Man, that is such uh, an amazing example. But that's exactly what Scripture says. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, it says, Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore, he waits on high to have, have compassion on you. And I think of, of God kind of, it's like he's sitting in, in his chair up there, and he's waiting. He's looking at you and just waiting for that opportunity. He goes, man, I, I can't wait for when I can show compassion. I can, I can jump down. Maybe they're in, in trouble. They call out to me. I'm going to jump and, and, and get something done. I'm going to do it for them. He says, he waits on high to have compassion on us. He can't wait 
to serve us in that way, to give of himself. That's the God who loves us infinitely. Isaiah 62, 5 says, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so your God will rejoice over you. Now, I want you to picture that, what it would look like. God is the bridegroom, the groom, and you is the bride coming down the aisle. And I think it looks something like this. When I saw that for the first time, I definitely shed a tear. And uh, I know some of you guys thinking, those guys are wimps up there. <laughs> but you just wait to your wedding day, and we'll see, see how you do, how you hold up. Man, that's a picture of God. Just looking at, at us as his bride and so excited that we have uh, put our trust in him, that we have that relationship with him. He's just like that bride groom on his wedding day. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exalt over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Another version says about he will be quiet in his love. It says he will calm your fears. And he will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Man, to think, I'm thinking of Philippians 4 and just how it says Christ comes back and it says with a shout. And I think that shout is not just so he gets our attention, but he's shouting because he's so excited that you're coming to be with him. That's the God that we serve. He's over, over, just totally impassioned with a love for you. So we talk about that aspect of just how intense God's love is. We're going to talk about the hugeness of God's love as well. I didn't think that was a word when I first looked at it. But, you know, I looked at the, the uh, synonyms and I thought, no, that's, that's the word I want, hugeness. And it is a word. So we're going to use it. The hugeness of God's love for me. Psalm 139, verse 17 through 18 says, How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. Let's put that in perspective. It was calculated by someone that... An individual, on the average, has 15 trillion thoughts in their lifetime. How they figured that out, I have no idea, but we'll go with it. 15 trillion thoughts. So if, if you took 15 trillion pieces of sand, and we're talking about half a millimeter in diameter, uh, you stack it up, and I did the math, that would be 40 foot cube. 40 feet is about from that wall to that wall. So 40 feet that way, 
40 feet that way and then 40 feet that way. If, if, if you filled that with grains of sand, that would be 15 trillion thoughts. And, and that's how many typically you have in your lifetime. Now, if you were to take this verse and take God's word to heart, which I believe I'd take God's word literally, it says if, if you were to add up all the sand, God's thoughts towards you would be more than that. All the sand on the earth. So they take all the beaches, all the deserts, add up the sand. And again, fortunately, somebody did the calculation, so I didn't have to. But they came up with 7.5 times 10 to the 18th grains of sand on the earth. 7.5 times 10 to the 18th. Wow. Wow. So to picture that, it's huge. But God's thoughts for you in a second are more than all your thoughts in a lifetime. And God's thoughts towards you are more than the grains of the sand on the entire earth. And he is thinking about you specifically, not just mankind, but you specifically. And his thoughts aren't just, oh, that terrible person. It's one of love and excitement and appreciation. He's thrilled about you, and he's thinking about you constantly. And only God can do that. Our limited minds can't go in those many different directions, but God does that. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10 says, For the mountains may be removed, and the hills may, may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you. And my covenant of peace will not be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Where's, I know I saw him, Adam and Michaela, right over here. Okay, there you are. Just got back from a honeymoon, Colorado, climbing mountains. Would you ever picture in your lifetime those Rocky Mountains moving somewhere? No. No, you, you, you had enough confidence to climb some pretty rough mountains knowing they're staying put. God's saying, you know, even more so, more confidence that you can have in, in, a, in the Rocky Mountains staying where they're at, you can have confidence in God's loving kindness for you. His love will never be shaken. Psalm 103, verse 11 says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your loving kindness towards those, excuse me, God's loving kindness towards those who fear him. Here, who knows what the farthest galaxy that has been detected uh, by the Hubble uh, telescope. All right. It's affectionately known as GNZ11. So, uh, GNZ11 is 13.4 billion light years away. All right, grasp that. I can't. Hopefully you can. 13.4 billion light years away. Now, I did a little math. Uh, the distance to the moon is 238,900 miles. Light travels in one second 186,000 miles. So light traveling from here to the moon... 1.2844 seconds. So here and back would be 2.5688 seconds to the moon for light to travel. Uh, and any, any of you math majors, feel free to correct me. On, uh, uh, so we're talking, there's 31,000, no, 31,536,000 seconds in a light year. So 12 million times for light to travel to the moon and back in one light year, 12 million times. So for light to travel to GNZ 11 galaxy is 13.4 billion light years. That's just, just hard to comprehend. And that's what we can see. 
It's just saying that's the limits of what we can see. There it is right there. Yeah. Uh, and again, God says, I want to put things in perspective here. I want you to know that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is my loving kindness towards you. Hopefully you say, man, I can't even grasp how high the heavens are. That's right. And you're not going to grasp how great God's love for you is. But let me tell you, it's greater than that. And if, if, if that blows you away, God's love for you should surely blow you away. The last verse here is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Here, I just think it gives a dimension of God's time. He has an everlasting love for us. It doesn't end at a certain time like when, when he gets impatient with us, when we've run out of, uh, of God's forgiveness, when we've done enough that God says, okay, that's enough. I've stopped loving you. That doesn't happen. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. It doesn't end. It will never end. We can count on God's love. As we try to grasp God's amazing love for us, I trust it will transform our lives. I'm going to finish, um, actually, after questions, I'm going to take a question or two before I read a last verse. Okay. Um, you said, that's God's response to us. Can you believe it? What if I can't? What if I want to but can't? How ought we pray when we struggle believing God's love for us? Yeah, we could find ourselves in that, that predicament, that, that challenge. And I would, I would start by just saying, God, help me to believe your word is true. I mean, that's where we found what we believe on. We, we, we go to God's word, and as we read it, I, I trust these, these verses will impact us in other places in the word. Where, and just say, God, my feelings, my experience may not lead me there, but Lord, I know your word is true. Help me to believe what your word says. And... Uh, I just think if you take time to, uh, to meditate on God's word. In fact, I'll, I'll make a point on the theological uh, channel of the discord. Uh, I'll go ahead and put those verses, at least, at least the references on there, if, if, if y'all would like to follow up on those. I know just like last week where you had the ABCs of, uh, of our identity, our true identity. I'll put the verses up there, just ones that you can go over and be reminded of God's truth. You took a lot of your verses from Psalms. Isn't that a poetry book? Can we trust it to be correct about these things? I believe, um, good, good question, and that is the focus of, I'd say Psalms is put in that context, but God included those, those comparisons, those analogies, again, for us to grasp. Uh, and, and what's neat is he's, he's not needing to go to uh, current technology that maybe could help us uh, in some ways. It's back people thousands of years ago. He put in it to, you know, he says, the heavens, how far can you see? Well, they could only see from their bare, bare eyes a certain distance. Now we can see so much more uh, into space, and it expands our understanding of even how uh, amazing God's love is. But I would just say, uh, yes, Psalms is, is, is a book of, uh, a poetic book. But God designed it. He put it in place. And those analogies, I believe, are, uh, are true to form. And, and what he wants us to get out of it is a, a, an understanding, a, a, to even try to grasp his love. He's saying, 
Let me give you some real concrete things that will help you see how amazing my love for you is. Um, Oh, nice. What is Susie Stinson doing now? (laughs) Sorry, I don't keep up with old girlfriends, so I have only one true love. But, um, man, can I close this with one one, uh, verse here? And this is a, uh, this was Paul's prayer to the, the church in Ephesus. It's my prayer to, to us for grasping God's amazing love for us. I think it's going to take a, a lifetime as, as Christians to really process it, to grasp it in a way that uh, it affects our life. And I truly hope that it transforms your life when, when you begin to see, man, I, I just can't run out of God's love. He loves me. He doesn't just put up with me. He loves me. He's passionate about me. He's like that groom up there at the front of the altar. That's God 24-7 looking at me. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Would that be our prayer for each one of us here? Amen. With that, have the worship team come on up. Amen. Thanks, Matt. You know, you guys can also stand up as we're going to sing some more songs, but you know what I really, really love about education, especially like the higher complex education, is that the more we comprehend the physical world that we're in, like what Matt shared about the farthest galaxy that we're able to see being, uh, oh gosh, 3.1 billion light years away, is that right? 13? 13.1, my fault. Thank you, Michael. Um, that that um, we're able to comprehend, like in, like in college specifically, the vastness of our universe or how things work, and then the intricacies of the universe as well, of our world. Like, you can go from like 13.1 billion light years away and then even shrink down to like the microscopic level and the complexities of how we're all made and built. And the more we understand how everything works in the world, you pair that with... God made all of that, and then you're able to comprehend his incomprehensible vastness of, the incomprehensible vastness of God. Like, you're thinking, like, I was in biology, not anymore, I'm doing business now, but I was, <laughs> I was in biology, like, microbiology, and, like, I was just fascinated by the intricacy of a single cell in which there are an innumerable amount of those. Like, the, the way that individual cells work is so intricate and so well-constructed it, it's difficult for me to believe that people study this without thinking, wow, somebody made this because it works so well. It's, I don't know, it blows my mind. And the more I learn about how our world works and even how our man-made, man-made things work, the, the more my brain explodes at the fact that God made all of this and he is greater and outside of all of this. And our God is love. And our God's love is more vast than the galaxies and more intricate than the single cells that we're made of. So let's sing this uh, next song in celebration of how great and vast and intricate our God is and how intricate and how wonderful his love is.
soul, every beating heart, every nation and every tongue. Come find hope in the love of the Father. All creation will bow as one. Let them rise, see the risen sun. Jesus, Savior forever and after.
Your glory is so beautiful. I fall onto my knees in awe. In the heartbeat of my life is to worship in your life. Cause your glory is so beautiful. Your glory is so beautiful. My life. And my life is yours. God, you are so good. We fall onto our knees in awe. The more we think about the, again, the vastness and intricacy of your love, Lord, honestly, the more I realize how little I understand, and yet there's so much of it that I'm able to comprehend, God. 
And it's so beautiful that we're able to have this intimate relationship with you only because your son died on the cross for us, that your son is the bridge between us and you, and that you loved us so much that you gave him so that we can have this intimate and beautiful relationship with you, God, and that as much as we can possibly love you or literally anyone or anything on this earth, you love us an infinite amount more, Lord. We glorify you and we love you, Lord, and we praise you in the vastness of your love, God, in your son's holy name. Amen. Thanks for worshiping, guys. So Sarah's going to come up and say some stuff. Hello? Okay. Hi. For those who don't know me, my name is Sarah Sherwin. I'm the VP of GCL. Um, So I just want to thank you for coming to all of our events this week, coming to Sunday service today. Um, And without further ado, we are going to raffle off this bad boy right here, Scooter. Um, So what I'm going to do is put in a random number generator, and there are 250 names. And so whatever number and name aligns is whoever wins this. They might not be here today, which is okay. And then after that, we'll raffle off some Chick-fil-A cards for people who are here. Yeah. All right. You guys can give a drum roll if you want. Yeah. All right, the number is 72. All right, let's see. We got Lauren Dixon, I'm guessing. All right, so that's the winner. We'll text them, call them, whatever. All right, now we'll do the... All right, this is going to be for a $25 gift card uh, to Chick-fil-A. All right. All right, we got, I'm going to butcher this name. I apologize. Oh, my gosh. Arguro. Arguro. Last name starts with, I'll just spell the last name. D I A K A K I S. No? No one? Yes? Oh, yes! Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. How do you say your name? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Next one is for a $50 gift card. All right. All right, we got Sylvan Blake. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got one more $50 gift card. All right. Cool. Corbin Jones. Hey, let's go, man. All right, that's it. Thanks for coming on Sunday. Thank you, everyone. Uh, You guys are free to go. Get lunch with people if you want, whatever you want. Have fun.